If you're looking to buy your first telescope or first good telescope, this video is for you. I'll cover which aspects of a telescope are most important, how much you'll need to spend, and share four excellent examples for you to consider. Now, I'm an astrophotographer, so we'll cover ones that can do that, but I also wanna make sure people who are interested in visual astronomy are covered as well. So hold on to your star charts and let's dive in. I hate to break it to you, but there is no one size fits all telescope that can do everything. So you'll need to be clear about what you want out of it. Do you wanna see planets up close? Do you want it to automatically find objects for you in space? Or do you wanna take an incredible picture of the Andromeda galaxy. My go-to recommendation is an eight inch Dobsonian reflector telescope. This thing can provide impressive views of Saturn's rings and has enough light gathering power to see a galaxy with your own eyes. However, you have to point the telescope in space and find these objects yourself. I think this adds to the whole astronomy experience while others want to click a button have it take a picture of an object without ever touching the telescope. That's a pretty big difference in user experience. Let's say you wanna do both of those things. You want the telescope to automatically point to the object, but then you get to look at it. That's where something like this Nexstar 8 SE comes in. It has enough aperture for some seriously impressive views of the planets, and the brighter deep sky objects. You can even try some astrophotography with this model, but you'll need a way to steady your phone or your camera for a crisp shot. If you really wanna get serious about astrophotography, you're gonna to wanna to look into something like that one on the end. It's an astrophotography telescope capable of insane deep sky images. However, as adorable as that little telescope is, it's not great for visual astronomy and it's expensive. Not to mention it's only one piece of a complete deep sky imaging setup. It doesn't include the camera, the mount, or the filters you need to get the pictures. Now, if you're not interested in finding objects in space and seeing them with your eyes, a smart telescope might make a lot of sense for you. This option takes you straight to the finish line without knowing a thing about astronomy. This one connects to your phone using a mobile app and you can take pictures of almost anything in the night sky. Instead of seeing things with your eyes, you get to enjoy a brighter, near real-time view on your phone or tablet. Okay, let's get real here. How much do each of these telescopes cost? There's no point in making a decision if it's way out of your budget. Obviously prices change over time, so these are just ballpark prices and hopefully when you go to buy it, there's a sale going on. Going from the most affordable to the most expensive, the Seastar S50 is about $500 US. The Apertura AD8 is about $700 US. The Red Cat 51 telescope, just the telescope, is about 900 US. And then this Celestron Nexstar 8SE is $1,500 US. Again, going back to that red cat over there, that's just the telescope. So if you add in all the accessories and things needed for astrophotography, you're looking at closer to four grand. I'm not knocking that option. That's actually my favorite out of all of these because I'm an astrophotographer, but the other options come with either an eyepiece to see objects in space or a built-in camera to take pictures for you. Let's talk about user experience because this is huge. This is the part that doesn't show up on the spec sheet. Be realistic here. How much time do you have? Are you prepared to learn how to stack and edit astro photos? Or do you just want to show your kids the bands of Jupiter from your campsite? If you're looking for the most pure astronomy experience and something that can collect as much light as possible into the eyepiece, this Dobsonian telescope annihilates the competition. Because it's an 8-inch reflector with an aperture of 5.9, it collects the most light overall. And for visual astronomy, that's a big deal. With a scope like this, you'll be able to see craters on the moon, the planet Jupiter, Saturn, Mars, and even the Orion Nebula through the eyepiece. For the record, I think everyone should start with a telescope like this because that's what I did. But that being said, options like this one weren't around when I started. This Apertura AD8 Dobsonian reflector. So Apertura is the house brand for astronomy retailer High Point Scientific. They've sold a lot of these and people really love them. It's a, it's a, it's a great company to order from. Uh, you will have to put it together yourself a little bit, at least the Dobsonian base. It comes in panels. It took me about 30 minutes to do that. So get ready for that. Also, it's a bit heavy and cumbersome to move around. So it might be a two-man job for you to move it around the yard when you're setting it up. 
Uh, you can separate the base and the optical tube from each other to make it a little easier to move around, but it can be pretty heavy. I think it's like 45 pounds or something like that. This is a reflector telescope, so you have to collimate it on a regular basis. So a little laser collimator, really simple to use. There's lots of tutorials online, and it's basically just to get those mirrors aligned so you're getting the best optical view possible. It's actually kind of fun when you get it. This particular daub comes in a 10 inch version as well. So even bigger views, more light gathering power, but an even heavier telescope. So this eight inch version is probably the sweet spot and the 88 is a solid one to consider. If you want a similar option, but with a little extra help, the Nexstar 8SC is a good option. This one is also an eight inch diameter for light gathering power but it's a little bit dimmer at f10. It also looks deeper into space at a focal length of 2,000 millimeters. This one is even better for the moon and planets because not only does it bring them in closer, but it comes with a computerized tracking mount to keep the object centered and track it. The built-in hand controller includes a database of objects for you to punch in so the telescope will slew to it for you. Unlike the manual daub, there's a bit of a learning curve to get this one aligned and functioning at its best. It's the most expensive telescope on the list, but many people consider this one to be the most well-rounded telescope money can buy. There's a reason it's been around for over a decade. Couple notes on the Nexstar 8 SE. One of them is that you need to power it. You need to plug it in to run the computerized mount. So you'll need a portable power tank or to plug it in at home. To get that pointing accuracy to find objects, you need to do a star alignment process, a one or two star alignment, where you just tell it where a certain bright star is in the sky enter that in and then it knows where it's pointed. The single arm mount is known to be a bit wobbly on this telescope. It's not really a big deal, especially for visual, uh, but people say that this telescope is a bit heavy for the mount that it's on. The telescope itself on this package is really, really nice. It's a Celestron C8 Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. So what a lot of people do when they outgrow this package is they'll take that C8 scope and put it on a more robust equatorial mount. It's a great telescope. And lastly, this one comes in smaller versions too. If you're on a tighter budget, there's a four, a five, and a six inch version too. This just happens to be the biggest one, the eight inch. Next, let's look at one of the most attractive options to consider because it's the most affordable. This is the Seastar S50 and it's taken the astronomy world by storm. This all-in-one smart telescope includes the telescope, a camera, a tracking mount, and even filters. The telescope inside is very small, but through long exposure imaging, it can reveal much more light than your eyes could ever see through a larger telescope. Whether you consider this one to be astrophotography or some sort of hybrid visual experience, I can tell you that the Seastar S50 is surprisingly fun. You control the telescope using a dedicated mobile app and simply decide what you wanna look at. It will automatically find and track the object without any previous astronomy knowledge. If a live view stacked image isn't enough, which is basically just a loop of pictures that get better and better, you can take the images off the device and process them yourself just like you would on a robust deep sky imaging setup. This telescope excels at the moon, the sun, and the brighter deep sky objects. It's super compact and I've been bringing it with us camping or on a spur of the moment night of imaging in the backyard. So the Seastar S50, this one makes the most sense for a lot of beginners getting into the hobby that kind of want to test the waters. And for the price, you really can't go wrong. For what this thing can do, it's an incredible value. You can actually get really decent photos of, of deep space objects, nebulae, galaxies. It does really well on the moon and the sun. It comes with a solar filter. It's a lot of fun. You can get a lot of images that you can actually share with others with this, which is kind of cool. And I know a lot of people, that's an important feature for them. It does include an internal battery, so you can just run it, you know, without being connected to anything. You're bringing it to your campsite or just outside. You can just turn it on, set it up. It will run out after a few hours, so you might want to get a portable power tank to plug it in to keep it going longer. A lot of people do that, uh, but it's it holds up pretty well, and I've used it on some really cold nights here in the backyard. Another great thing about it is that it comes with everything you need, including the tripod and a bag, and it's just a ready-to-go system that you can get up and running the day you get it, as long as it's clear, of course. There are other models of smart telescopes out there. Actually, the Seastar comes in a 30 millimeter version. The Seastar S30 just came out. So that's one to consider. It's even more affordable. And then the Dwarf 3 
is another option that I've demoed recently that did a great job. That one's not out yet, but that's coming out soon too. So there's lots of options to consider in the smart telescope category now. If you do end up going for this one, it's not like you're gonna be like, oh wow, I should have waited and got the way better version. This one's gonna hold its own and I think it's gonna be very, it's a relevant choice for a few years at least. Lastly, we have the most expensive options when you consider all the other things you'll need to enjoy it. That is the William Optics Red Cat 51. This is one of the most popular astrophotography telescopes of all time and one that I have personally taken dozens of incredible images with. It has a small aperture and a short focal length. This one shoots at 250 millimeters, which is similar to a focal length you'd find on a telephoto camera lens. The difference between this and a camera lens can be seen in the images in terms of color correction, flatness, and star quality. In the astrophotography world, an Apple chromatic Petzval refractor is tough to beat. Remember that this is an astrophotography only option and you'll need to pair it with a DSLR, mirrorless, or dedicated astronomy camera to enjoy it. What you're seeing there is my current setup with this telescope, and let me tell you, building a deep sky rig like this is the ultimate rabbit hole. This telescope is great for a DSLR or mirrorless camera. If you have an APS-C or a full frame camera, absolutely great fit or a dedicated astronomy camera. You'll need to find the right adapter to connect your camera to the telescope, but you can find these very cheap on Amazon. So when you're using a telescope like this and you wanna run the camera and automate your imaging session, you'll need to use additional software either on your laptop computer outside or something like an ASI Air Wi-Fi controller. This little Red Cat comes in two bigger options, the Red Cat 61 and Red Cat 71 if you want a little bit more aperture and focal length in a similar package. There are lots of other options in this category for wide field imaging refractors. So it's up to you to make a choice, but this Red Cat has been proven for many years to be one of the really good ones. Of course, these aren't the only four types of telescopes available, but it's actually a pretty good mix. If none of these stood out to you, my advice is to go to a stargazing event held by your local astronomy club. See what they're using, ask to look through it, and ask them what they think of it. I almost guarantee that they'll have one of the options I've shared here. Buying a telescope is a big purchase and you wanna get it right. Not just because of the money, but a frustrating first experience may ruin the spark that got you interested in looking up in the first place. I hope that this video has inspired you to continue your astronomy journey and that you end up making the right choice for you. Until next time, clear skies.